Now I'm ready to jump in the water. I'm going to say hello to my family, crocodiles, bull sharks, piranhas, <laughs> anacondas, indigenous tribes, pirates. <laughs> Everyone would like to get something special for you. Pirates, money. Bull shark would like to eat you because he's hungry nonstop. Crazy shark. Alligators looking for food. Piranhas looking for food. Anaconda stole. Everyone's looking at something. I'm inside. I'm like a target. But I'm not target. I'm your friend. With 50 plus years of combined produce, supply chain, entrepreneurial, and business experience, Craig Slade and Ed Bertad discuss the impacts of fresh produce on their lives and health. This podcast is a casual conversation between two friends just trying to get better. This is The Fresh Cred. Hey, hey, good morning, The Fresh Cred crew. How are you guys doing? What's going on, Ed? Good morning, good morning. And we've got a we've we've got a new face in the the Hollywood Square boxes here. Uh, I believe uh, that is the man who swam the Amazon, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Martin Strell. Martin, how the heck are you? I'm good, thank you. You're right. Excellent. Amazon story, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. <laughs> Uh, swam the Amazon. This has nothing to do with the Amazon company. This is actually the Amazon River, right? That's that's. I would love I would love to be part of the Amazon too. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need money. I need money for my future events. <laughs> well, Jeff Jeff's got some, so you know maybe maybe you know you should do a do some sort of a. a, a Cross promotion. Yeah, cross promotion. Amazon, swim in the Amazon, you know, back by Amazon, you know. Swimming with uh, Amazon for the Amazon, maybe with. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, so, Martin, it is uh, super. All of us here are ecstatic to have you on the show. I mean, you've got such a phenomenal story. We're not going to have a chance to touch on probably a tenth of what we want to talk about today because, you know, we want to respect your time and, and try and keep it concise. But you know, we definitely want to dig into who Martin Strell is, uh, what your journey's like, where you came from, how you got here. But um, so I, I guess a couple of things, I mean, you know, to set the stage, you have swam the Amazon, which uh, how many miles is that? 3,000 something? 3,274 miles was total swim. What it was still possible because it's still safe is not so safe because over there uh, that start uh, in atalaya below the andes it's still safe even not so safe because the water is crazy over there it's coming down it's coming down from the mountains it's very fast with lots of warpools lots of influences uh, it was still okay i was trying to go a little further over there but i said by my set I'm risking, I'm going to risk my life. It's going to be too much, maybe. Well, at 3,200 miles, you were already probably risking your life at some point. So I can't, Im I can't imagine getting worse. But, I mean, if they told you, hey, you, you've been through the easy stuff. It's time to get out. I, I don't even know what the, what the next wave was. So. Yeah, swimming the Amazon. If you survive one day, you're lucky. <laughs> if you survive one week, you're even more lucky. But two moms surviving uh, to be healthy, to stay uh, healthy, because 22 people of my team was in the hospital. That's the first problem, how to stay healthy with so many parasites, so many dangerous animals around you. Uh, sun is crazy, people are crazy, lots of tribes. Amazonian women, uh, pirates by the end, last 300 miles. I was fighting with them every single day. My security was pretty good. It was seven people with me extra. But they attacked us even last day too, but it didn't happen. Nobody died. And by the end, it was great oh. score. Lucky, All right. so, lucky, lucky day, I, last day. <laughs> I, I got to stop you there. Okay. So, I mean, so the Amazon women, I'm assuming, are on the land, correct? They're not in the water. Yeah, yeah everywhere. On the land and in the water too. I was told, I was told at the beginning, uh, I was there three times before start. 
I was told to everywhere, Martin, you're not going to make this river, nobody swim, and Amazonian women's going to destroy your project. You don't know so much about those women. And they were right. Women are nice everywhere, but the uh, Amazonian women are very, very special. There's no men. There's no men, only women. And every woman would like to have you, would like to kiss you, would like to hug you. It's fighting <laughs> between them. Yeah. Just go really? there. You... Yeah, yeah. It's it's very, very special life over there. Well, I got some friends that might take you up on that. They didn't know really? about the Amazon women section. so. <laughs> yeah, but you have to be careful. Uh, you can pick up uh, all kinds of diseases. Hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, G. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I... Yeah, better stay home. Stay home better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Martin, can can you talk a little bit about your prep? For You mentioned you visited several times prior to the swim. How long had you been thinking about doing this? And how long would you say was the concentrated preparation to actually uh, when I When I was in China, I swam the Yangtze River. It's another very, very dangerous river swimming those canyons. It was 50-50 how to survive over there. It's, uh, because this river, Yangtze, is almost dead with more than 2,000 chemicals. Last three weeks, I spent every day in the hospital. Well, last week, we were talk with my American team, I was talking a lot about for my future. We were talking about the Nile or Amazon. Uh, I even didn't know that Amazon is longer than Nile. If you Google uh, the longest river, it's just going to say it's Nile, but it's not Nile. Amazon is 70 miles longer than, uh, than, uh, than Nile and 60 times more water. And logistically, it's a little, a little easier to organize Amazon. And I got lots of news about what's going on in the Amazon area because Amazon the rainforest is, is our our rainforest. What we breathe, oxygen is coming over there. And the biggest problem was every year fire, cattle ranches, soya beam destruction. So we have less and less uh, oxygen. Uh, I'm ecologist and I'm not against people over there. I've been there three times before, start talking to people, indigenous tribes, police, scientists, because if you don't understand Amazon life, all those creatures, dangerous fish and the parasites and everything, you're not going to make it. Swimming with crocodiles, piranhas, kangaroo, bull sharks, very aggressive sharks. How you can do this? One day to survive is hard. Uh, and then by the end, I said by myself, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And now I need good film screw. We're going to make a movie about this whatever, I'm going to die or to survive. And uh, because Amazon is important for all of us. Over there is more than 220,000 different plants where it's possible to find today every cure for very dangerous diseases today. Like dementia, for example, it's Heimer disease. There's no Alzheimer over there. And uh, that's another question too. So it was lots of questions. Uh, our, now I'm specialist for the Amazon life. Uh, even people with me born over there, middle of the Amazon, they didn't they, they didn't know so much about everything. Just local, local uh, stories. But uh, with me, yeah. it was a little easier to understand the Amazon. Yeah. So, you, so in the Amazon, the preparation, and you're there. One thing you talked about is staying healthy. Okay. That's that's a big problem. How, how to stay healthy with me was uh, maybe best medical team from the planet. One lady specialist for Alzheimer's disease and Rifat Latifi trauma surgery is like I call him the the back in number two. They spent with me twenty four seven more than two months. Uh, even though his medical team with you is hard to stay fair uh, uh, because I've been in the water nonstop at least 12 hours per day. And uh, Amazon is Amazon. It's very, very special river, really, really, how to survive every day. So you were there two months. Is that about what it took you? 66 days it took me Six there. 66 days, yeah. 
you know, 66 days. And did you, so you said several of your staff wound up in the hospital, wound up sick. Did you yourself go to the hospital, get sick? No, uh, no, me never, never. No, well, that's uh, a lucky man. Even though in, in my uh, blood, uh, I checked my blood later. You have to go in the hospital. I, I got my preparation. It took me one year to get ready for the Amazon swim against hepatitis A, B, uh, yellow fever, uh, different diseases, against malaria, malaria, you have to be ready. And then uh, I was like a physician, doctor, I spent the year before in one clinic to teach me how to understand everything. And then didn't happen, but in my blood, it was all kinds of parasites. Didn't develop. That was big surprise for scientists or even Denga. Didn't happen. They said wow. on one on hundred million on hundred million people you're egg, you're you're the only one who's who has survived this one hundred million people, and uh, so I didn't go to the hospital. Lucky Oof. man. By the end it was good day Easter Monday. Even though I didn't know seven hundred thousand people by the end were watching. It was like soccer game. <laughs> uh, like Copa Copa <laughs> Maracana in Brazil, yeah. lots yeah. of fans it was huge. They put me straight to the hospital, but then, yeah, Amazon was very very risky, but very lucky. I'm proud of the Amazon swim. I gotta know. So, is it true there is a penis parasite or a penis oh, fish? Oh, true. Oh, yeah, very, very true. That's the most dangerous uh, thing. Yeah. You have to know this candiru is small fish, two, three inches long. The fastest fish on the planet goes very aggressive in urine. So be, be careful. Don't pee in this river. It, it happens something <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Very, okay. very, dan very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay, Martin, you're 12 hours in. You got to pee. Yeah, I, but I have wetsuit. I'm, I'm, I pay in my wetsuit. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, yeah, with, so with the wetsuit, it's a little easier. With no wetsuit, be very careful. <laughs> you you uh, can load something. Uh, <laughs> damn. Yeah, that would have had. I'd have been out at the uh, the penis fish as soon as uh, I learned of that. That they, they you could count me out of swimming the Amazon. <laughs> that's when I you call your travel agent to cancel fish. is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that fish that fish uh, uh, swim 40 miles per hour 40 goodness, miles man. per hour uh, when it's time wow. for action yeah so be careful <laughs> it's time for action <laughs> yeah yeah be careful very rare see, yeah uh, well, Martin, okay, so so certainly I mean they, they, there's books and, and stories and so much about you Tell me about uh, what I'd like to know. Can you take us back to young Martin? I mean, can you tell us about Slovenia? You growing up just kind of real quickly. How does a guy get to swimming in all these dangerous places and with the, the world record you're setting up? How, how do you get there? I mean, what kind of journey does that look like? I was born in the middle of the forest with animals Deers, eggs, bears, javelinas, rabbits, all kinds of fish, snakes. So that was part of my life. I grew up with them. Lots of small rivers, ponds. Uh, my, my Our farm was huge with over 300 acres. So it was lots of different kinds of animals at home. Lots of dogs, horses, cows, sheets. Oh, that's a smart of my part of my life at the beginning. So I'm very good with all kinds of uh, animals. Uh, I'm not afraid, like the Amazon swimming with bull sharks or anacondas, piranhas. I, I understand uh, uh, crocodiles. It is risky, but I'm I'm very good swimming with dangerous animals. And then. You know, it was my uh, time to go to primary school over there. So till 16, I spent in the same village called Mokronok or Wet Food. That was my great childhood. No TV, no radio, no newspapers. Everyday life, middle of the forest, fighting with animals. We were very good for with fish, picking up mushrooms. We didn't go to the grocery. 
It was possible to find everything in the waters, uh, creeks, uh, ponds, uh, middle of the forest. That was great life. Hmm. Living life like, you know, thousand years ago here in America, Apache, Comanche, Sioux. <laughs> Lots of stripes. It was they didn't they didn't go to the grocery. <laughs> it was right. my life pretty the same. <clears throat> and then uh, that's the reason why I'm a little stronger, a little differently. Then I started swimming small small rivers. Yeah, because I'm a musician too. It took me lots of time, lots of hours every day playing guitar, school, university finish. And then by the end, uh, after so many years studying guitar, you finish university, I said by myself, okay, now it's over. I'm gonna go to the ocean, ocean site in Croatia for one beautiful island, a nice hotel uh, for a little relax. And I was swimming every day and I met accidentally best marathon long distance swimmer from Croatia, Velko Rogusic. And he said to me, Martin, you swim well, you could be good professional marathon swimmer. I even didn't know what does it mean professional. <laughs> what does it mean? You're gonna get money, swimming for money all over the planet. I'm general secretary, you're gonna be professional, free tickets to 40 bucks per day, 80 for two, free hotels. And between thousand to forty-five thousand dollars, depends on the position. And then that was my beginning. And it was uh, three weeks later. I swam Capri Naples in Italy, 30, 21 miles. I met best swimmers, John King, John uh, Councilman, Coach Mark Spitz, Coach. Okay. Uh, uh, then John Kinsella, 1500 world record holder that time. Lots of swimmers from all over. That was my great beginning. And then more and more, step by steps, yeah. And uh, then I finished with the Amazon. <laughs> well, and you know, and that's the crazy. So, so you're very well known for your swimming, but you've done a lot. And, and I don't know, are you familiar with the song uh, by Jimmy Buffett? Uh, he ate the last mango in Paris. No, I'm not. I know Jimmy Buffett. I know Margarita Will. He lives in uh, in uh, uh, Key West, one well, nice city, Florida, south, close to Cuba. But I'm not so. I'm not familiar with this song. Uh, I'll have to send you this song. It's a, It's oh. about the. It's about this guy. So he ate the last mango in Paris, and he basically does a little bit of everything, right? I mean. He he's fought in fought in the Vietnam War and then he came back and he he just does everything right and and he took the last boat out of China. It just you 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 because like I say, there's more to you. So you're a swimmer. You mentioned you're a musician. You've been in the military. Uh, tell us some of the other things that you you know the the besides swimming. What all have you done that not everybody has done? I don't know. I'm very good uh, with weapons, too. Uh, I was a professional sniper, too, in the military. But when it was time, when it was time to kill somebody, I said, I'm not going to kill anybody, and they fired me after one year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm very good with archery, too, a little special man, good for diving. Uh, I can swim very cold water, too. If, when it's frozen, almost, if it's not ice, I can swim wherever. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Water is just part of my life. In the water, uh, when I'm jumping in the water, my body is different. My mind is different. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very good for meditation, too. Uh, even though I didn't know before. Uh, when I swam the Danube, when water was extremely, extremely cold, too cold for swimming. Right. And then, and then, uh, lots of pain it was. Uh, so my, uh, uh, I can what I could, how how I could say I can hypnotize myself. What okay. is hard to understand. What is hard to understand. My 
uh, concentration is so deep, so deep. I was thinking, thinking, thinking about this, this, and then at one moment I was gone. And a couple of minutes later, I like to be sleeping. And then a couple of, <laughs> couple of minutes later, pain were gone. No more pain. Huh. It's, hard, it's hard to understand. It is only, everything is mentally. So uh, mental preparation for such event is important. Uh, if you're strong, I, we have lots of swimmers like me, even better swimmers than I am. But mentally, maybe not. Because swimming the Amazon, you have to be mentally very, very strong. Swimming with the most dangerous creatures, hours and hours every single day, believe it or not, mentally is not so simple. Or swimming in the cold water when it's almost frozen, hours and hours every day, and next day again, 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 again. This is uh, this is only mental mental strength, mental power. Uh, so physically, you can prepare your body, but mentally, it's a little different preparation. I, I was just going to ask, so Martin, I, I'm a hunter, and 10, 12 days, maybe two weeks is the longest, you know, I've been out in the field, cold weather, snow, you know, that type of environment. And I've shared even with Craig and, and Mason on this podcast that, um, it gets to a point where depending on how cold you are and how tired you are at the end of any given day, you have something in your mind that makes you feel like just packing everything up and going home or quitting. And so during the course of 66 days, was it every day that you were convincing yourself to go on to the next day or were you finishing your days as strong as you started and did not have an issue when you talk about mental well you didn't say toughness but i'm calling yeah. it mental toughness or mental um stamina was it every day that you were at the end of the day potentially quitting and convincing yourself to go on or did you start or finish as strong as yeah, you started that's a very great list? question thank you very much very important for me just the beginning was very important for me first day how to survive first day swimming the most dangerous river on the planet and why to swim why to risk my life uh, when before you jump in the water you, you have to talk with yourself a little to say okay i'm gonna swim i'm gonna try this is the amazon dangerous river i'm gonna swim with the most dangerous creatures this is i'm i'm like part of your life uh, I'm not against crocodiles. I'm not against bull sharks, piranhas. I just would like to be part of your life. That's with your mind. You have to be part of this family. You have to be. Don't be against. Don't kill crocodiles. Don't kill bull sharks. Try to touch him. Swim with next to him because animals gonna understand you. Even snakes. Snakes gonna is not gonna attack you. If you're not aggressive, they're going to attack you. No, no. And then when this day was done, over I, first day I swam a little less than 70 miles. And next day again, don't think about the future when you're going to reach Atlantic Ocean. It's too far. Don't think about this. Think about this moment. Now I'm ready to jump in the water. I'm going to say hello to my family, crocodiles, bull sharks, piranhas, <laughs> anacondas, indigenous tribes, pirates. <laughs> Everyone would like to get something special for you. Pirates, money. Bull shark would like to eat you because he's hungry nonstop. Crazy shark. Alligators looking for food. Piranhas looking for food. Anacondas too. Everyone's looking at something. I'm inside. I'm like a target. But I'm not target. I'm your friend. And you have to think about that. But if you're not aggressive, if you swim very softly, if your team is with you, with eyes, because somebody must be with, with eyes nonstop with you, then you can swim. You can be a little comfortable. Because one hour in the water is not so simple. It's not like running, uh, biking, uh, being sitting in the kayak or canoe. You don't see anything, even your hand is murky water, muddy, lots, uh, every stroke is risky. But don't think about it. You have to be comfortable, like sitting at home in your chair. 
And it, if you do this every day, then you you have lots of chances to survive. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. The visibility, right? So your your visibility was very low. So I mean, basically, you were in, in a bubble, which probably makes it even harder to distract yourself if you can't see anything on a horizon or anything far away. So that even that even speaks further to the discipline. Right. And then the, the mental toughness that you were talking about. So that's very interesting. Thank you. You know, middle of the forest, I met bear, big, like a grizzly, not like grizzly, a little smaller, but very, very big. We, we, were, we were apart maybe like 30, 30 foot distance. What to do, where to go. That happened accidentally. There's not so many bears in where, where I grew up. And then I started talking to him. Hey, man, what are you doing here? Hey, are you going to attack me or what would you like to do with me? I started talking to him. He was watching with me. I don't know what he think. Maybe he said, because, uh, uh, this guy is bullshit. I'm going to go. I'll, <laughs> I'll marry my brother. Imagine. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He is animal like I'm human. Uh, we understand one another pretty, pretty much. Just don't be aggressive. Don't start, uh, don't looking for piece of something thrown into him. No, stay calm, talk to him, be friendly, uh, try to say something or whatever. Just don't watch it him, just talk to him, talk to him. This is this is a prize for big and for dangerous animals. Ed, you need to remember this story when you're up in the Colorado mountains on those uh, long hunts, just in case you run into a grizzly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, it, it goes against everything I've ever been told, yeah, yeah. which is get, you know, get big, make a lot of noise. Um, so I'm going to have to, it's going to take me a while to process that. But more importantly, um, Martin seems say, like he can you sell know, anything, I mean, Craig. So perhaps. Um, and while I'm, while, while I'm in the water, usually I'm swimming with dolphins, though, many times. And we communicate under the water. And if you have good ears, look, I'm a musician. I'm trying to pick up this sound. They communicate nonstop. I'm listening this communication between them, and I'm trying to reach this sound. And I'm 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 talking with them in the water, under the water. And they understand me, unbelievable. And swimming with dolphins, this is this is like my security team. It's like my bodyguard with me. Bullshark, bullshark wow. is not, it's not gonna come close to me. Huh. Yeah, because it's hard to understand, you know. Same size crocodiles or bullshark, the same size, but mentally totally different life. Mentally, bullsharks is a lot like uh, animal with no brain, and uh, dolphins so smart. They love us so much. It's hard to understand. I wanted to, to touch base back to, you know, as I was saying, how you've lived a diverse life, right? And, and obviously, psychology and, as Ed mentioned, your salesmanship, all that kind of stuff. But have you ever done any gambling in your time? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah, I spent lots of nights playing uh, poker on the Europe called the Rock, too, but... That was uh, the ma- that was money for my life. That was uh-huh. my job. Playing okay, playing guitar was good, good money. But playing poker, playing cards, I was prof- in a playing roulette in casino because in casino I spent lots of nights too. Pretty successful because you risk. You know, it's po- playing poker. Uh, uh, this is mental game. If you don't, you don't need very good cards to be successful poker player. We call it bluff, bluff. Uh, yeah, bluffing, yes. Bluffing, yeah. Uh, we play bluff a lot, and uh, poker is mental game. You need playing hours and hours the whole night, 15, 16 hours. Yeah, my income was uh, sometimes over a million dollars, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> you you you, you tra- Yeah, I can't even. I, you know, I can say, a I wouldn't touch you at a poker table because, like I say, I mean it is so mental, uh, and and I can only imagine a guy that can swim with bull sharks, 
or <laughs> you name it, and then sit at a poker table. Yeah, those guys are, are, are dead. I mean, and uh, I don't know if you you probably didn't play Texas Hold'em, which is obviously the Texas the most Hold'em. Popular. I know very well. We well, know yeah. very well Texas Hold'em. We are we are friends, but when we are playing, when I'm playing with you, I'm not your friend. Believe it or not. <laughs> I can imagine, buddy. Come yeah. On. Well, like I say, uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> that that's got to make oh for God. a dangerous card player. Yep. I mean, no fear factor and tremendous discipline, right? Those two those two things right there could make yeah. a pretty damn yeah. good I, like poker. I say, yeah, I, Playing poker right. is very very risky game. Yeah, even though you have good cards in your hand, but you're gonna lose uh, if you're not mentally enough strong for poker. You're not going to make $1 million. And you need a little experience, stay calm, uh, your face, uh, be careful because lots of people watching you, trying to understand you. Uh, yeah, for poker, if you would like to be a successful poker player, you have to be a little special too. One last thing on your, your life journey in different places. So uh, flamenco, guitar, you taught some of yeah. that, is that right? Flamenco, so what... I love. I love. I am professor oh. for classical guitar, uh -huh. but I love flamenco guitar and country music. That's the best for me. I love Hawaiian music too. I love good music. But you know, when I was seventy-four, so uh, twenty-six, forty-eight years ago in the Spain, I met Paco de Lucia in Granada in the castle at Alhambra. He was selling this plates music. I bought four of him. And in Slovenia, people didn't believe that one man can play so beautiful music. Uh, Paco de Lucia passed away in Cancun, in Mexico, a couple of years ago, was 67. Best flamenco player ever. So I, I'm in Spain every year, just about flamenco, listening to flamenco music, being with right. people, middle of the city. You don't need to play. Flamenco is flamenco. This is just music style. You don't need to play guitar. You can play with hands, with legs, uh, three guys, we, middle of the city. Uh, flamenco is something, uh, this is part of life. Gyp this is gypsy's music, gypsy's music. You know, like Django, Django Reinhardt, he was a very successful uh, jazz guitar this was gypsy too, right? You know, you know Django Django Reinhardt yeah. was a very 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 popular man. Mm -hmm. I love Django too. Listen to this music, but flamenco is uh, energy for me. That's the reason why I love Spain so much, like Castel, Hambra, Granada, Andalusia, Barcelona, Catalonia, uh, like uh, Canarian Islands, Baleari, where it's Nadal. Uh, uh, Nadal, tennis player, he has home over there too. I feel I feel good energy meeting these people, listening this music, being with them, and uh, yeah, this is everything is energy, and I feel in Spain I feel great energy, like listening right. country music, like uh, Johnny Cash or or uh, Alan Jackson or uh, Margarita Margarita Will guy <laughs> from <laughs> from uh, Key West John Jamie Buffett uh, uh, yeah. basically uh, old uh, classic country uh, this is this is energy for me I'm listening music music every single day <laughs> So, so we're going to recruit, so we're working on uh, the Fresh Cred band, right? So Mason and Ed are both musicians. I'm not, but I've, oh, I've really? always, I've always wanted to be Mick Jagger. So we're oh, in the process, we're in the process of putting yeah. together the Fresh Cred band. So we're going to be recruiting you to be one of our guitarists, if that's okay. So. Yeah. One work, one guy is working now yeah. to meet uh, Pink Floyd's. They, yeah. they, they're trying to organize huge event in Egypt next to Cairo pyramids. Yeah, yeah. It's one guy who is manager for uh, Pink oh. Floyd. Yeah, maybe, maybe we will we'll play together a little. Yeah, we could fun. we could be their opening act. I think that is coming fifty years, fifty university for Pink Floyd now. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Martin, I, I you know there's a there's a saying. You know, I'm sure you've heard many times, but it's a small world. But I truly get the sense yeah. that for you, the world is small. <laughs> the world for me, I swam over 150 countries till now, 152 original. 
Uh, for me, the whole world is very small. Uh, 50 years ago, it was still very big, but now it's getting smaller and smaller. Uh, because when you see the whole world, North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Pacific Islands, Australia, New Zealand, you can sit and fly. Like Tuesday, I'm going to sit and fly into Dubai, another part of the world, swimming, coming back to America. Today, so, life is do, different. So do you speak several languages? Or do yeah, I don't speak. I understand lots of languages. Okay, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Even Chinese, because we are Slavic. Uh -huh. We can com communicate Serbian, Croats, Macedonian, Bulgarian, Czech, Slovak, Russian countries, Polish. Uh, in my time in school was uh, French, German, and Russian, and Serbo-Croatian. Now people speak English, especially young people. English people speak. Young people speak uh, fluently, you know. I was born in the middle of the forest, now with computers. Today, young people sit in the computers they have in school. You know, my kids speak, my kids both are PhD. My son is even my manager. They speak English fluent today. Okay. My English is uh, learning middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> so to be honest with you martin mine's kind of learned in the middle of the street too uh being from texas very few people can exactly understand my english so they wouldn't co they wouldn't really? qualify what i speak as good english either so <laughs> yeah. yeah depending where we're at depending where we're at you know sometimes <laughs> i have to translate for them you know at restaurants and stuff like that well, slovenia where i live is small country just two million but we have lots of dialects from north to south, they don't understand one another. You need translator in Slovenia. Can you imagine? Really? If, yeah. If you go, for example, in India, they have hundreds and hundreds of dialects. They don't understand one another. Or in China, it's the same. They speak huh. Chinese. They speak Mandarin. They speak Cantonese. But three, three, four hundred different dialects, though. They don't understand one another. Like here in Arizona. We have Navajo, Biggest Stripes, Hopi, San Domingo, Apache, Yavapai, Pima, Gila. They don't understand one another. They, they speak totally different languages. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know. You Like if you go in New York, in New York people speak today over 700 languages already. Just in Toronto, 350. And people say, how is that possible? Yes, it's possible. New <laughs> York is a small world. People speak lots of dialects. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, we yeah. understand Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, French, German, uh, Russian, uh, lots of uh, different, even Chinese. It took me two years to understand a little Chinese too. If you go in China, people. Would you say your musical background helps? I I, I tend to. I, I don't know a lot about linguistics or, or language uh, or how the brain works but I've made I've made a comparison so I only speak English and Spanish but I, I took French in school that's good that's good if Spanish language is great if you speak Spanish you understand Portuguese you understand Italian you understand Romanian you understand lots of languages if you speak a Spanish language if you understand English it's a little harder to understand different languages. Yeah, we are, we are in Slovenia. We have special language. In Croats, don't understand us. We understand Croats fluently. Croats, wow. Serbs, they don't understand but us. The question I was going to ask, and this is always kind of uh, amazes me, I think to myself and my own thoughts in English, right? It, it would take, I've never really tested it. I mean, I've spent long periods of time in Mexico, for example, speaking Spanish almost exclusively, but it's still for me only as fast as I can translate it in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, having lived in so many places, your personal internal thoughts, what language are they in? And first question, if you talk to me, it's a little uh, French German sound is for me more understandable okay mm -hmm. even though people speak english but uh, i grew up with this with this middle of the street you know kids we were talking mm -hmm. we were talking french russian german 
uh, French was very popular at that time when I grew up. No English. Even the school, hmm. people didn't have so much English. German, Russian, French, and serbo Croatia. that was language. When you talk to yourself when you're swimming, you know, you talk to yourself when you're swimming, are you talking, which language do you talk to yourself in? All kinds of languages. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to make my head busy. All kinds of languages. I'm talking, I'm talking with myself in many languages just to keep me busy. I'm trying oh. to forget. I'm singing, I'm talking with myself. Uh, in my head, it's always like a movie. Non-stop busy. Don't think about swimming, dangerous animals about you. Forget about, because everything is mentally in your mind. Animals around you understand you. They have great feelings, much better than you have. And it, you, you could say by yourself, oh, they don't care about, oh, they care about you a lot. Even crocodiles, he's staying at the same point when you pass him. And if you're not aggressive, he's not going to attack you. But if you're aggressive, you're crying, calling something. Animals understand immediately something something is wrong with you. You're immediately target for dangerous animals. So burning question for me. Uh, yeah, I realize obviously you have a high tolerance for fear, but at some point you've been terrified and scared in all of these adventures and places you've been, what, what, what was the most terrifying moment uh, that you've been part of, that you had to, that you had to mentally get through? Huh. Yeah, this is a uh, very wide question. Yeah. When I grew up, you know, uh -huh. my father was hunter. He was, he was a very good person, but uh, over there is alcohol, right part of life they were every night play, playing cards drinking not one glass but later slots gallons for everyone they got drunk and when people are drunk they become very violent too was my father too when he came home it was cash question how was with kids good or not yeah you know your son this son is a pretty tough guy okay i'm gonna find something stick he was trying to find me uh, <laughs> it was hard to catch me and that that was like my school how to survive with my father when was right a little too much drinking when he came home almost totally wasted uh, i was gone of my house for a couple of days to days uh, uh, and uh, that was my right. school like mentally school if you're if you're violent with people, people don't like you usually. People are very aggressive against you. Relationship is not good. But if you're uh, if you're friend, like uh, very easygoing, calm guy, with animals, even with people, everything's going well. Well, so that's the reason when I grow with uh, with animals, with dangerous animals, we spend uh, great time together. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, right, and that was my school. With 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 people is the same. I'm not aggressive. Wherever I go, I'm trying to say in every country. If for example, if I go mm -hmm. now, I'm going to Dubai. People speak English, Arabic, many languages. I'm trying to say, like, um, in in local language. Hello, how are you? Right. It's nice, you know. Don't say. They speak English, but uh, like a Muslim says, Salam Alaikum. If you do, if you go mm -hmm. to Malaysia, for example, uh, Muslims popular, we have over a billion people, Muslims, Turkey. Don't say, hello, how are you? Just say, Salam Alaikum. <laughs> oh, look right. at this guy. He speaks our language. You know? you know, try to be close to people. Not to be somewhere away or Slovenian, don't, people don't understand you. Try to be friend immediately, immediately. When you come, you know, when I was flying first time, first time to China, I didn't know any word. And next to me was sitting one guy from China, a little English. He said, please, can you tell me in Chinese how to say hello, how are you? And about the women that just, oh, you're so nice lady. Can you drink something with me? 
And as I was writing phonetically over there, down, when I came to China, they say, Ni hao? Oh, you speak, okay, Ni hao ma? How are you? Oh, you speak English, unbelievable. Yeah, they were watching with me. You know, language is very, very, very important to understand how to, how right. to come very close to you. If you go in Spain, don't try to speak English. Try to speak Spanish. Say hello, uh, como esta señor? Yeah. Como esta señor? That's it. You don't need to say more. Como esta señor? Bill Clinton, president, American was in Slovenia. That was 90s, was heavy rain. And he said in, in Slovenian language, hello, how are you, Slovenia? <laughs> People got crazy, unbelievable. He didn't say uh. any English, Slovenian. So, <laughs> so language, language is a big part of, of your culture. You have to respect every country, every language. We have to down the planet over 7,000 different languages. And try to understand, not just if you go in India, try to understand local, local languages, dialects, so mm -hmm. not just Indian. Because people in India speak English a little special English. They understand right. if it's a little special English. Like Tamil, my book is over there. I have three books in India too. In different languages, different That's, dialects. You know what? But that is, uh, I mean, through this so far, you've talked about, you know, the mental toughness. But maybe the most important thing, you know, what you're saying here is, is, you know, be accepting and don't be aggressive, right? I mean, you know. The... Don't be, yes, congratulations. Be accepting and don't be aggressive. You're going to survive everywhere. So my statement is in Rome. Mm -hmm. Live like a Roman. So in America, live like American. Don't talk, don't say, yo, we have in Russia, we drink vodka. In America, you don't have vodka. In, in Russia, we have Kazachok music. In America, you don't have, don't say, this is America. In America, mm -hmm. live like an American. In Russia, live, try to live like Russian. Or in right. China, live like Chinese. Try to do this. So that's a statement. In Rome, live like a Roman. And you're going to survive all over the planet. People is going to accept you everywhere. You're going to be friends for everyone. Good words to live by, for sure. So uh, so we do a quote per week. So we may either make that our quote, unless you've got a life to live by quote. I don't know <laughs> if you have a life to live by quote. But uh, if not, then we're going to we're gonna qualify that. I think. Yeah. I think that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I think I had told you before. Um, so I, I believe you, you you enjoy wine. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Wine is part of my life. What wine is great? Great food. If you drink wine, if you drink wine every day, you're gonna be more healthy, less sick, uh, more happy too. You sleep well. Before you go to sleep, if you drink a little, like Moscato, sweet wine, you're going to sleep like a baby. So it's good to know something about wine. Wine is, for me, very great part of great food. <laughs> Craig, is it possible we that y'all were separated, separated at birth? birth? Except I wasn't from the Amazon. But so, so, so I, I too, okay. am a well, wine he, lover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. don't and, say. And I told you this. So, and literally, this is this was not set up when I first met you. I told you about this. My all-time favorite wine is a Slovenian wine. It is this wine. It, it, it really? is so. So, I mean, really? lit, it's called Rojak. It's the Rifos grape. I don't know if you. I don't know if you know this wine. Oh. Oh, Refo. Oh, that, oh, that's great. Uh, this is close to the ocean. Refoshk, Refoshk. Okay. We call it Refoshk, yeah. Very oh great. Black God. wine. It this is, is good wine. You, I mean, there is. And so I, I, there's a big story around this wine, where I was getting it. Uh, apparently, the U.S. distributors weren't paying the winery. And so he cut everybody off. I, I literally have been buying this wine up every time I can get my hands on it. Uh, I had to buy, I bought a couple of cases in California, had them brought over. Uh, it's not an expensive yeah. wine. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, no. 
No, no, very good wine. It's like so Cabernet Sauvignon, pretty the same. Cabernet Sauvignon. We have in Slovenia, in Italy, Croatia, Austria, Hungary, like we have red wine, black wine, white wine, and rosé. Four, four, four. It's totally different. Rosé or red wine is totally different wine or black wine. So this wine, the fourth, this well, is the, black. The next time I see you, Martin, and I will see you again up in Phoenix because I get up there quite a bit. But the next time I see you, I'm bringing you a couple of bottles of this because you, you, you will have your only wine that you you'll you'll also be a Slovenian wine lover just like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, I'd sure. like to see. <laughs> and and mm-hmm. you know, for my co my guys here, you know, I've been trying to tell them all the health benefits of wine, and you've just you've just confirmed that more wine is good. So that's that's good news, and I can feel better about it. Yeah, I drink I drink for lunch time. I don't drink for the breakfast. But I drink for the lunchtime, for the dinner, daytime before I go to sleep. Every every meal I eat, I drink one glass of wine. You don't need drinking bottles to be drunk. I never drunk. Police tested me many times. And his first question, did you drink a little? <laughs> yes, I drink every day. What do you drink? Wine. Oh, wine. You're going to be in pr- trouble. They tested me. Zero. Zero. See? Or what? You're a liar. I'm not a liar. I eat well, I drink well, never too much. Right. A little, a little, a little. Yeah, that's the point. Remember that, Craig. Sometimes I have too much. Yeah, it's a hard time for me to. That's (laughs) the key. (laughs) It's the. (laughs) That's the. Yeah, that's the part where you might not not have been separated at birth. A little of anything. (laughs) It's either it's either a lot of everything or nothing. (laughs) I've got two speed, two speeds, zero and a thousand. So. More is better. <laughs> and, and then something else along yes. the lines of drinking stuff. So in one of your pictures I'm looking at, you're drinking out of a bottle called Spring of Life while you're at the Amazon. Is there is that just a bottle of water? Was was that Spring of Life anything in particular? Yeah. When I drink this, it's a little special, like a cure for my body. Yeah, this is a little special, a little sweet. But it works well for my body. When I'm tired, when I'm very, very tired, it's good to drink this. Because uh, when I was, uh, when we were talking about this, how to stay healthy on the, on the Amazon, not just mm-hmm. on the Amazon, wherever I swim. It's, it's, you know, I swim 12, 14, 15, like Mississippi swim. I swim, I swim average, average 11 hours, 45 minutes and 68 days. The longest swim was 17 hours one day. You have to be healthy. It's rain, it's windy, it's cold, it's hot. Everything is possible. It's not every day a beautiful day. And uh, lots of people around me coughing, sneezing nonstop. You can pick up whatever. It's 40, 50 people around me nonstop. And uh, that's that's the reason. If you, if you eat well, if you drink well, if you drink the right fluid, you're going to be, you're going to stay healthy. That's important. So I drink this part. Spring, spring of life. So the spring of life, you can buy that here? Yeah. No, this is Slovenia and the planet of health produced this. This is very, very good, very okay. healthy well, fluid. Too. We'll have to check into that and see if we can get our hands on some of that stuff too. Cause, uh, I can bring it to you one, excellent. believe it or not. No problem. Well, definitely put us on the list for, for, for getting some of that. Um, I did have a question for you, Martin. So I know that a, a big focus of yours is promoting awareness for peace and also clean waterways, which I think is a great mission. I know that you grew up in a very natural environment. Was there a point that sticks out to you where you noticed pollution or litter or a scar on the natural world caused by humans that really kind of stuck with you and drove you further? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, really. Thanks for good question. Yeah, my my uh, my slogan is swimming for peace, friendship, and clean waters. And now environment too. When I grow up, water was pure drinking everywhere. Everywhere water, pure pure water drinking, in animals and everything was very organic. Everything. And then, till sixteen, when I was sixteen, they started building roads. And lots of new houses, everything, uh, and uh, we got lots of chemicals. 
all the fish suddenly, all the crabs, all the animals were gone. They died, everything. They killed all of them. So pollution was immediately very, very high. Okay, now it's back. Now it's back, everything a little. Not like before, but much better is now. So when I was young, a little later, I started thinking about this. Hey, we're going to kill ourselves. What we are doing. People don't care so much about life. They care about money, how much you have in your pocket. Pollution is not important like today. Plastic pollution everywhere. Microplastic everywhere. Pesticides, now we have, it was the beginning, 100, then 1,000, 2,000. Now we have even more. Ganga, India, Nile, amoeba. Pollution is so high. So that's the reason why I'm thinking about to organize swimming around the world, like scientific research swimming expedition. It's pretty the same as to go back to the, my childhood, when it was pure water, every animal clean, no plastic, no pesticides, no chemicals, what we have today all over the planet. So we are killing ourselves. Our mother nature gave us everything for great life. And what we're doing, we are so greedy. We are reading news who's the richest, Bezos, Musk, 200, 300 billion of dollars, Russian all, uh, millionaires, billionaires buying yachts, three, 400, 700 million dollars. Who's the richest? Who has more money? People don't talk so much about ecology. Plastic, what we have. We're, we're, we're killing ourselves. We have money, lots of money, too much money today all over the planet. But our quality of the life goes down, not up. People are more sick. We have more cancers every year. Lots of diabetes, uh, dementia. We have in America 20 million people with Alzheimer's disease only. Where, who's going to find the cure? So the cure, right cure, we, have, we can find in the Amazon area. Who's going to give money? When I finish the Amazon, one year later, we opened the Amazon. I, Amazon, found whose target was $23 billion of dollars with Brazilian go. This is good. Okay, finally something good. We need more money to set up everything for scientists, to, to, for good life, uh, finding job for people over there, too, not just over there, all over the planet. We have to say much more. That's the reason why I'm promoter for uh, clean water. Uh, for uh, I'm again, I'm very, very against plastic and plastic and pesticides. But that's what we. So have Ed, today. I don't know, but I, I, I think I'm, I'm seeing the uh, uh, having Martin at uh, Ifco's booth at PMA. I think uh, uh, I see a great uh, cross promo here. You could help Martin out and. Uh, it speaks to the message you guys are as your company, what you're trying to do. So, yeah, definitely. I, I think, uh, especially, uh, you, you know, we were <clears throat> listening to, um, someone speak recently. They talked about even recycling being, um, a last resort, right? So we, our company focuses on reuse, right? We, reusing even before recycling, recycling should be the last resort, um, reusing, is now really what the focus should be and and which is obviously plays into a lot of what we do with our product but i i um i was going to ask you know i think at one point um promotion anything we can help you you said you had several books it'd be you know interesting for you to 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 call those out and um so that folks listening could perhaps look for your book and and purchase it and then the the around the world swim i was I was going to ask you, is that something that you're going to do by yourself or is this a group of people or how, how does that work? Yeah, swimming around the world is a huge project. My boat is waiting, 550 foot boat is waiting already in Greece. It's not so expensive. I need uh, money. Who's going to buy this boat to prepare boat for, for the trip around the world for, for five, 500 days swimming? That's going to be connection for, for, with thousands of scientists. We're going to be connecting with kindergartens, primary school, high schools, universities. It's a huge project. We are not against scientists, but we would like to be one big team working together. Uh, what I said before, 
plastic pollution, microplastic, pesticide, chemicals. We have today too much of everything. We are going to check every fish, every water, every river. I'm going to swim Orinoco, Amazon, Nile, the worst rivers, where is amoeba, more than 2,000 chemicals, Ganga again, Yangtze in China, uh, the worst, the most polluted river on the planet, is Barry Reef. Barry Reef is not like before. What's going on with everywhere? What caused this? What caused lots of chemicals and pesticides? We have to talk. People must understand more. There's not enough news. People must start learning in the school what's going on today with the planet. It's not just problem English, I'm going to learn in Spanish, I'm going to math, this, 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 this. We have to start what we eat, what we drink every day. That's the reason why people are so sick today. Lots of new diseases. If we have COVID, what is COVID? Why people are so sick everywhere? And people don't know, even scientists don't know what caused this. Pollution, pesticides, it's going to be in the future even more. And we have to start, we have to stop slowly this. First of all, we have to understand. I'm promoter and I'm doing promotion for the whole world, what's going on today on the planet. That's the reason why I'm trying to set up everything on my boat to be like, uh, uh, like one big university where it's going to be lots of scientists, chemists, biologic, Mayo Clinic is with me. We're going to say, how to stay healthy, what to eat every day, what to do, what to be, what to do to be mentally strong. And people need, this is food for people, for the people uh, losing weight, not to be overweight, not to get diabetes. We have lots of diabetes here in Arizona, Navajo tribes, they have more than 50% of diabetes and people dying, people not so healthy. What caused this? Food is not good, too much sugar. Too much fast food, uh, nobody cook at home. They go to McDonald's, uh, uh, chicken fried uh, in everywhere, uh, grocery. I cook at home by myself and uh, I'm never sick. And lots of questions, lots of answers going to be. Now I'm looking for the sponsors. It's not so expensive. Uh, this is my trip is for successful businessmen, somebody who understands business very well. You can make extra money but what i need now is maybe 30 million dollars this is not so big money bezos has money <laughs> musk has money too much money everywhere we're gonna we're gonna collect money for people from ukraine i'm against the war i don't know uh, what's going on with putin today in russia uh, in uh, russian russia is good country is clean country russian people are nice but uh, politics is crazy and I know Ukraine people is not so far from Slovenia. We have uh, uh, very good relationship and we're going to collect money for people in Ukraine. So now it's a terrible situation over there. Too. So lots to do. Lots to do. So Martin, shows, make yeah. sure that uh, through, through the WhatsApp communication we got, make sure you send us any links or connections that you want us to share mason's going to put up we'll put out through some of our uh releases and different things like that we'll try and connect as many people as you can and make it available so just be sure and send over to him any kind of links either yeah. to your books any money you're raising for ukraine uh your your swim around the world all that kind of stuff anything you want us to to blast out there we'll d definitely get it out there my my personal assistant her, her name is maya peron She's going to send it to you, everything, really. I have great. And my son is my manager to Borut. I have two kids. My son is PhD for computers. My daughter, she's here in Arizona, PhD for international business. My kids speak English perfect, even German, even French. Uh, they're going to send it to you. Maya's going to okay. send it to you, everything. Yeah. I'm really trying to organize this work swim. It's hard to get money, even for the Amazon. It was a little four and a half million dollars total. And movies, going to be lots of movies, documentaries, five, 15, 45 minutes, future length documentary. I'm going to be like a news for the whole world. And lots of musicians, uh, professional athletes, politicians, presidents going to be with me, believe it or not. 
Only problem is now to start who's going to buy me boat and to give me a little money for a salary to pay ship's crew and uh, scientists and equipment. Well, you, men you mentioned Russia. I hear there's a few Russian oligarchs looking to sell their ships, so you might be able to get a discount on one of those out of this. <laughs> yeah, luckily they 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 park <laughs> so, <laughs> big yachts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have lots of money. Oh, yeah, they're so very rich. Might be able people, to get yeah. a discount on something if you go that route. But uh, yes. yeah, yeah, you're so, right. No, yeah. that Thank that the war help. there is certainly a tragedy. Uh, it, it's 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 heartbreaking to see, and that goes back to what you talked about. I mean. You know, why the aggression, right? You know, it's, it's, you can see, I mean, that, that's on a world scale how the, how unnecessary aggression is and how it can create such tragedy, uh, for people and the world. And so, uh, yeah, ho hopefully, uh, I, again, it's hard to understand what's going on. We don't, for me personally, I, you know, for us, we have no idea you know, what it is like to be part of that Eastern Bloc. You certainly have a much more familiarity with the world over there and how the people are, but... Uh... Believe, it, believe it or not, I understand this culture. We are mm -hmm. the same. We are Slavic people. If it's not fighting every day, something is wrong over there. But what's going on today, even Russian soldiers, they are against. They don't like. This is politics. But Putin must stop this war. It's, I don't know what's wrong with him. With, with, this is something wrong. I know that Ukraine is a special location, Crimea, and Putin would like to keep this uh, uh, for himself a little. But this is not good. We need today sport, music, science. Uh, that's art what we need today. People would like to go. Russian people are nice, believe it or not. I've been in Russia many times. They have good life, pure, pure water drinking, but politics, again, is a little off of everything, and uh, something must be wrong with Putin today. He's sick mentally, or I don't know, I don't know, I don't understand him, really. We have lots of refugees already in Slovenia. They're coming every day. We organize for them everything for medical care, dentist, school, kindergarten, finding job, they have food, everything is free. We, are, we have like a brothers and sisters. And uh, Slo uh, Russian, Ukrainian people are great. Uh, blonde, skinny, blue eyes, very nice ladies. <laughs> and, 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 and they're, and they're yeah, not as aggressive and, uh, as Amazon women. They're, they're very nice ladies. <laughs> no, 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 no. They love us. No, no, no. Amazon and women yeah. are very, very special. Uh, well, well, Martin, yeah. it has been, uh, you know, I, I don't want to take, I mean, it's, I, again, we can't, for me, I, I could probably do this for the next three, four hours. I mean, and, and you know what? I mean, if you'll come back and see us, I, I, I can guarantee you we'll, we'll, we'll love to have you back on. But yeah. Well, where are you located? Where are you located? Yeah, I'm in Tucson, so. I'm in Tucson. I'm in Tucson many times. And the Speedway East, uh -huh. I have, I'm part of one ranch. I'm many times in Tucson. Uh, it's my physician over there now, the lady specialist for Alzheimer's disease, okay. Dr. Latifi. Uh, my trauma surgery, he's from Zuson too. Uh, text me address and can come and say we, hello. We can we'll drink one, we can uh, open uh, one bottle uh, of wine one oh day. Oh no. Okay. Uh, yeah. so you, might need a, a, you might need a you might need a chaperone or a referee. But that's a that's a bottle each, something. right? That's not just one bottle. Yeah, okay. Eight bottles, yeah, no, maybe not enough wine. Uh, one for it. Well, well I'm gonna so bring no, one or two. I mean, two. Absolutely uh, and, and <laughs> for sure. Uh my son lives in Tempe. So, uh, I'll be back next year. Uh, you know, the Super Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl is going to be here. Yeah. And Phoenix Open Golf, Waste Management. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, for sure, I'll be there that week. And hopefully, you're not in, uh, hopefully, you're not in the midst of swimming around the world. I don't know. Yeah. When is your, when do you think, what are you, two years out on that? When, what's your estimated time on the swim around would the world? Would like to swim. Start is, uh, my starting point is Los Angeles, United Nations Water Day, March 22nd. We see how successful I'm going to be this year. If somebody's going to buy me this boat, then we're going to start maybe March 22nd. So from a training perspective, you're ready to go at any time. 
Is that what you're saying? Anytime, yeah. <laughs> Anytime, <Wow>. yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for eight swim. Ready. I swam 37 states in USA already, but uh, it's not over. You know, I swim twice a day here, and I'm playing pool too now. A little more billiard is good game too, and snooker. Snooker is good game too. I can see I, it now. I thought man. I had a lot of hobbies, but apparently <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> I, apparently, I have room for more in my life, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out how to. Um, uh, I guess just not sleep. Uh, I'm on. I'm on a mission now to get Ifco to buy this boat. Yeah. And have okay. have Ifco on the side of the boat. We could do shirts. Can you imagine? I mean, my gosh. Well, we, we uh, we'll, turn the, uh, we'll have to go along. I mean, we'll have oh, to go with them. You and I'll be I mean, there to help. We have to keep an eye on Martin and make sure that <laughs> you know. Um, somebody's got to bring the wine. Yeah, somebody has to bring the wine. You could be the wine man. This boat, Golden Iris, has a casino, swimming pool, hot tub, sauna, everything, gym inside for 1,000 passengers. Being this boat, going around the world, talking to the people about future life, uh, pesticide. Believe it or not, uh, what I was doing till now was great. It's been great. The every, every, the Danube, Mississippi, after 9 a.m., Paraná. In South America, Yangtze, China, before Olympic Games, finally Amazon. My trip, every trip was great. We have lots of movies, lots of books. Believe it or not, this World Swim is going to be the top, not not about my life, about the whole world. Right. This, this, this is going to be the biggest, one of the biggest sports events ever, ever, ever. Like even Michael Phelps is here in Arizona, with close to me. He's going to start. Leonardo DiCaprio is going to be with us. He's promoter for PPC, Plastic Pollution Coalition, from Los Angeles with Diane Cohen. Uh, lots of movie stars. It's going to be Schwarzenegger, Damon, uh, Matt Damon. Uh, Robert Redford is with me to support me a lot. I have lots of people. Mark Spitz, a uh, uh, famous swimmer, too, is with me. Carl Lewis, uh, very good uh, athlete. Uh, Michael Johnson. Uh, was Cassius Clay? I was driving for him. He was here in Scottsdale. Okay, he passed away. Cassius Clay is. Uh, we have. I have lots of supporters. Uh, musician Paul McCartney. He was in Tucson. Uh, Linda's parents are still over there. They have 60 acres run, ranch. Right. Yeah, we see. was sitting in my car here. I was driving for him. Olivia Newton. Is that right? Yeah. So but, so so you're telling me I've been in the same car as Paul McCartney, or is that a different car? No, in my car. What I have now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I thought I was Paul McCartney when I was in middle school. So uh, I actually. Uh, <laughs> Well, like I said, we could go on forever. We will. We're going to come back and do this again. We're going to keep tabs on you, Martin, and what's happening out there. Uh, Thank you. But this Thank has been a super for pleasure. Everything. It was great meeting, great meeting you, and um, very happy. Huh? We have to go do I, something. I mean, I thought our energy level was pretty good until we met Martin, and now I'm going to, like, Talk, talk I got to go like, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know, paint the house and, you know, <laughs> rotate the tires so, on my truck and anything so, that's, you know, even if it's not necessary, I'm going to go do it today. I went mountain biking with a friend yesterday, right? And you thought you and crushed you it until now, right? Well, no, I mean, I just thought, so I'm listening to Martin. So it was literally, I mean, it was like six and a half miles in, six and a half miles out. I literally thought we might have to call an air vac to get me out of there. And, and, and I, I, I mean, I, I mean, what, 13 miles, something like that over probably beginner intermediate run, nothing for normal bike mountain bike, but literally I was gassed. I mean, I was gassed for the rest of the day and I'm thinking about Martin. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so out of shape. And what we, you know, me and my, me and my 13 mile mountain biking ride. I'm like, you know what? For Martin, he, that's that's uh, he, that's his breakfast. That's what he does for breakfast every day. Don't, he he don't, rides thirteen miles. Yeah. Don't, don't with, say uh, I'm, with tired. One of those... I'm tired. <laughs> don't say you're tired. Yeah, I, I got I got to start thinking about that. That's what somehow I got to start getting inside of my head. I need to do more meditation for sure. Craig, yeah, does yeah. the wine go in the Camelback or does it go in the bottle holder? <laughs> in the okay. wine in the in the bike. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> well, I tried it in the bottle holder, but after the first couple of bumps and bounced out and busted, so that that didn't work. So it's going to have to be a Camelback program hey, from this point forward. There might be an forward, invention. So. There might be an invention there somewhere. We might have to patent that. <laughs>
but uh, no, uh, Ed, let's uh, give everybody how to get in touch with us. But, you know, for, for all of you guys listening and stuff, we're going to post up uh, how to get in touch with Martin, how to find his books. Um, certainly, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do to figure out how we can get part of this whole boat program. I mean, it, it is a great cause. It's a great effort. I think uh, it, it's it's going to be big and and just super thrilled to be the, be part of it and you know martin i'm telling you i will see you me and you're going to see you're probably going to wish you hadn't met me let's just put it that way but uh but neither here nor there uh we'll be seeing each other so oh really yeah uh, no so. what can i say okay well yeah well thank you martin for sure thanks yeah. so much anything <laughs> else you want to add before we before we uh, let ed get to the closing ceremonies here uh, yeah you got anything left martin I'm going to send you a little uh, uh, this link about uh, this, the word swim, what is the most important for my future, and how to organize. We have lots of rich people, lots of good companies in America that would like to be part of this uh, swim, but they don't know. They even don't know. Like Nike, they don't know what I'm doing. Uh, uh, would like to, like Adidas to German company. Like here we have T-Mobile. Verizon, all kinds of big. Bezos, he has money. Amazon, the same name. Amazon, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, hope you're going to be lucky. Cool. We'll definitely oh, get yeah. that uh, information out there. Speaking of which, if any of you have any questions or anything, um, any suggestions or any uh, particular topics you want us to cover in the future, you're welcome to email us at thefreshcred at gmail.com and follow us. Uh, at the Fresh Cred on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as Cred Fresh on Twitter. Excellent, guys! Thank you all very much. Thanks, Mason, for for the show. Thank you, Martin, for joining us. Everybody, have a wonderful Sunday, great week, and we'll see you guys. Thank you. Bye.